if you've read the pimp's rap, then you know it's the pimp's Bible. It takes the real man to read the pimp's rap. Went to nerds, they wouldn't dare. The pimp's rap is a masterpiece of storytelling. Amy Shea, director of development at Paramount Pictures, stated, I thoroughly enjoyed reading your riveting memoir, especially the eloquence and consciousness inherent in your writing. Your story is a truly heart-wrenching epic with quite a cinematic subject matter. And I'd like to just add, the pimp's rap is the bomb. I will go on to write other great books, but The Pimp's Rap was written by my soul. This book is not recommended for player haters or Uncle Tom niggas. Only the real people will pick up this book. They know that not everyone in America enjoys the pleasures of prosperity and leisure. Being African American has never been easy. We were robbed and isolated from our country, family, and culture. This is a serious book about a serious subject. The Pimp's Rap is a human drama that surpasses anything that you have or will read. The Pimp has deep historical roots. He was and is the product of black ghetto life. There is no way to understand him without some understanding of the interplay of the forces of human deprivation, social dislocation, and betrayal that produced the atmosphere in which he thrived. In the 1880s, most African Americans spent their childhood in small cabins with dirt floors. Their parents were sharecroppers and poor farmers. The children wore hand-me-downs or inexpensive clothes and went barefoot. Like their faux parents, they grew up on a diet of cornbread, beans, and pork fat. Disease spread quickly among the impoverished, and the life expectancy of blacks was well below the national and state levels. African Americans suffered under the severe segregation enforced by Jim Crow laws passed in the 19th century. Lynching black males became so popular that the late, great Billie Holiday wrote a song called Strange Fruit. It was common among rednecks to say, it's Saturday night, let's hang us a nigga. The ugliness of police brutality and white racism that blacks encountered was often manifested in acts of violence. The loss of a black male increased pain and economic hardships. Blacks moved up north to escape the brutality of the South only to discover that they were restricted to an overcrowded rat and roach infested environment. It was very common for black children to lose toes and fingers to hungry, starving rats. And you motherfuckers got the nerve to wonder why I curse. Black men suffered long periods of unemployment and were forced to seek labor jobs. If injured, he was fired immediately, and the only disability that was available was what he could hustle or steal. It was estimated in 1910 that 99% of the black population up north lived in slums. Unable to afford an education or fine work, many blacks turned to alcohol. Others turned to crime or panhandling. Gamblers, prostitutes, hustlers, and pimps emerged from this era. Hustlers with finesse operated in speakeasies and after-hour clubs catering to the elite. The street hustler operated boldly on street corners and in alleys. They lived for today because tomorrow wasn't promised. The pimp was a unique and colorful character that captured the attention of ghetto life. The best job a black man could get was an elevator operator or janitor. Being employed was a blessing from the white man. 
but the pimp rejected the white man's job and created his own way to wealth. This infuriated law officials, politicians, and wealthy white businessmen. They often made comments like this. Can you believe these niggas don't want to work for us anymore? They don't want to clean our houses, shine our shoes, show for us around, or raise our kids? The pimp shunned and intimidated white society by being flamboyant and displaying his wealth. In 1933, during the Harlem Renaissance, there were many pictures taken of famous hustlers and pimps who were striking figures of Harlem, New York. They were elegant in their meat coats, packet cars, and expensive Cadillacs. For the first time in the inner city, there was a black man that represented success and demanded respect. He was a king in his own world. Many of the hustlers who operated the number rackets on speakeasies and after-hour joints put meat on the table for many deprived families. In the beginning, the pimp's existence was not out of greed, but about a survival. You motherfuckers consider me to be the lowest, second class, most ignorant of all beings. And then you wonder why I want to be a gangster. Well, you motherfuckers make me a gangster. The white media constantly projects me as a dope pusher while he makes addicts out of children, giving them Ritalin and Prozac. They say blacks want to be gangsters, but the real gangsters are politicians who lie and rob the poor. And we know that most social workers, therapists, psychiatrists, news media, and TV talk show hosts are the real pimps. They exploit and destroy innocent human beings.